At this time, I'd like to introduce Chris Hernandez, athlete, Arkansas City, and he will make the presentation of Mr. Wayne Jackson. Chris Hernandez. Wrestling started in 1960. Uh, Wayne was not in high school, uh, but uh, was probably on the radar as the Bulldog team started to get tougher and tougher. I think Buck was in his fourth year, he won the state title. So Wayne was probably in middle school at that time, was probably excited about the prospects of, of wrestling in the purple and gold. Uh, Wrestled as a, as a high schooler uh, right off the bat as a 95 pounder, made it to the finals of the state tournament, wrestled on a couple of state titles, uh, went on to, uh, to K State. Uh, some, some of his teammates, the Ramirez brothers in high school, uh, many of you know them. Uh, he's got a teammate here tonight. Um, Many of those wrestlers back then were, were tough, but not maybe as polished as some of the wrestlers he later got a coach as far as mentally tough, but just not uh, with all the lessons growing up from the kindergarten level up. Wayne went on to college, wrestled at K-State. As many of you know, he, uh, he got a name called Walkin' Wayne, uh, made it to the national tournament, but his team was not able to go with him. I don't know, did your coach go with you? I never... No, coach didn't go with him. So Wayne coached himself, would have won the national title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to coach himself. Uh, did you ever go, did you go to the table and argue any calls? Uh, but anyway, uh, if I remember right, my coach in college told me that that was his first year, uh, Stan Abel, to, uh, to coach at college, and he remembered uh, Wayne being announced over the the, uh, the airwaves that he you know made it to the tournament and had to make his own way there. Uh, Wayne then came back to his hometown. He's always loved his hometown. Uh, came back to his hometown. Uh, was an assistant coach for a couple of years uh, under his mentor. Well, maybe not. But uh, assistant coach for a couple of years. That's an inside joke. Uh, but then was given the helm, and rightfully so. Wayne loves wrestling, and I think that's where he, uh, where he found his calling, uh, was a coach. Um, what I know of Wayne is probably a little different than his earlier teams. I know he probably did a lot more coaching in the early years. The teams were still young. They were still learning. Wayne was teaching them things. By the time I, I was able to come and wrestle for Wayne, uh, he was more of a psychologist and a pretty good one. He said he had to be. Um, I can remember uh, sophomore year uh, wrestling at this tournament, the Derby tournament, and uh, getting my butt kicked in the uh, semifinals by a kid from uh, Wellington, E.K. Franks, and uh, I think he beat me 12 to 8. And, uh, of course, no one wants to lose a match, but we're driving home uh, that after the tournament was over and Wayne's driving, I'm in the front seat, and we're kind of going at it a little bit, talking. And it gets quiet. Everybody starts to go to sleep. And Wayne kind of leans back, kind of stretches, and says, Wow, Chico would be pretty good if he quit going to his back. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you can't kick your coach's butt or anything, so you just got to take it. Uh, that that next week, I wrestled EK in the in the in, 
Ark City in the duel and he only beat me by one point because I didn't go to my bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wayne was always good at that. Uh, in wrestling practices for me, uh, you, we had some pretty tough workouts. We had some pretty tough athletes in our room. Um, he knew how to push the button to get you to understand that you're not working hard enough or you're uh, but, the, but I think the biggest thing that he did for me and the wrestlers that I wrestled with, and I speak on behalf of all of them here tonight, was he knew how to encourage you. Uh, you when you're in a wrestling room and you're wrestling tough guys and, and everybody's going at it, uh, he would be able to pick you out uh, when you did a good takedown and publicly in front of your peers tell you what a stud you were. Man, that Chris is a stud. Did you see that? Man, Jeremy's just, oh, that guy's a stud. Little things like that. I know uh, Mark's over there smiling right now. He was probably thinking, there's no way this works. Uh, but, but it did help us, uh, and Wayne loved us. He loved coaching us. He loved being around us. Love catching up with us. He loved the sport of wrestling. Uh, I don't think you do it that long if you don't. But Bob, uh, when I told him, uh, he called me and asked me if I was going to do this speech for him. I said sure. And he said, uh, Well, Chris, he goes, We'd really like to hear from Wayne too. And so, uh, what I think I'll do for this last piece here, so we get this thing moving, I'm going to bring Wayne up here. I'm going to ask him some questions. Otherwise. You're going to get this. Well, thank you, thank you all for coming out. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Good thing you're still working. All right, so let's start out in, in high school. Was I right? Did you want him? I mean, in middle school. I must have been about a fourth grader. But boy, when I went up there, I, them guys, they had no shirts. They had them just tight with some shorts over them. That was Larry Allen. <laughs> <laughs> we had Herb Jimerson, Dale Naden, Buckster was the coach. I don't know. I, I just, I, it wasn't like I had no shorts. I had to wrestle after I seen that first match. I always wanted to wrestle with the Bulldogs. So you're fourth, fourth grade is when it started. Yeah. Okay, so you're in high school now. Now who's your mentor in high school? Who was teaching you how to be tough? Urban Chuck Banks and uh, Jerry Munson and Rick the Brick Lewis. Uh, Rick the Brick is here. Rick the Brick's here. Yeah. And Bunch Yeah. Well, I didn't I didn't hear you say Jimmy Ramirez. Oh. <laughs>
What's the one wrestler? <laughs> don't ask me who's the toughest one there was. That make everybody, everybody, everybody ask you that question. Yeah. You won't ask that. No, I won't answer anything. Well, I just try to tell them who you told me it was. I never told you. What's the one wrestler when you think of et cetera? <laughs> what's the one headache wrestler you had? Who was the one coach that, that you strive to be? Well, Wayne Miller. We had a hard time <laughs> be. And uh, so lasting memories? Any 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 memory that, that comes to mind that you want to share? Uh not. <laughs> 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 I uh, I didn't I, I wanna I, I did have a little bitty speech ready. <laughs> did a good job, Chris. I'm afraid I'm gonna get roasted pretty bad. <laughs> Everything you do. This guy, Bob Gonzalez, must uh, support and promote Kansas wrestling, do more for Kansas wrestling than anybody I know. And I mean, a lot of you guys in here do a lot. But I remember when I used to coach it after state, I, I would go in hiding for about a month. I called him up about this deal, and he's hauling mats and getting ready to help him do the national NAIA tournament and doing this and that. He's always doing something. I'm telling you. He's dedicated and appreciate everything he does. And uh, so thanks a lot, Bob. And I'm, I'm really honored to be uh, up here uh, getting inducted with the rest of these, these guys. There's quite a good lineup. With our, all these guys I got a lot of respect for and have had for a long time. And uh, I just, I'd like to recognize a few people real quick here. I don't want to take a lot of time, but uh, my family, Pam and Brooke, uh, that was important for me, for them to like wrestling, and they sure did. Pam kind of liked wrestling when I first met her. She's from out in northwest Kansas, and I got to know her by, I married her, uh, or I, I married her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I married uh, her sister, who was mar married to my good friend and my teammate on the wrestling team. Uh, my, my main workout partner, Dale Samuelson, who he also, uh, when Fritz Moore died, he took over coach, he was my coach for a while, and uh, he coached out in Oakley for a long time, so she already kind of liked wrestling, and she became Clark City's best fan. And then when Brooke was born, uh, it was right in the middle of wrestling season, I had to call Mark Richardson to tell him I couldn't come to practice, and uh, the next day I got a box of them uh, bubble gum cigars to give out to the wrestlers. When she was uh, not a month old, Pam brought her to the, to the Newton tournament. And uh, she's been about every match ever since all through high school. And a big fan. She still comes back sometimes and watches the Bulldogs wrestling state. She even watches the NCAA wrestling on TV. So I'm really happy that they were such good fans. And being inducted in the Hall of Fame, I look at it really as a, as Ark City Rest. All of these guys, thank you guys for coming, all York City people. Uh, it's um, it, it's a, I represent Ark City Rest, and, and and I'm proud to, happy to, and I got the chance to move there uh, my second year out of college, and so I jumped at the chance and. Uh, I really fell fortunate. Our takedown club, Don McBride, started in the early 70s. And, our, and then uh, Jerry Munson and all his family here are here. Jerry Munson was the big takedown club president and, and leader of the takedown club for many years. Don McBride and Charlie Dow and Jerry Munson. And, uh, nobody did more for City Wrestling than those guys. Um, other takedown but Doug Einstein was a takedown president for a while. He was a great wrestler. And, uh, and uh, Rick and 
Karen Lewis was boys with great wrestlers, and, uh, and, and Rick was the president of the Takedown Club for a while. Uh, Mark Richardson was a coach with me all, all, almost all those years, and then he coached four more years than me. Uh, when I retired the first time, his boys were here, the wives, and, and Mark and Janice had time, and Cody had most more time to make him. Anyway, uh, I, I can't imagine coaching without Mark and uh, and our, uh, anywhere where I went coached, I would like to probably, but I, there's something about RC and I was so happy to go back home there and everything was just right. All the great wrestlers we kept having come through and through. They already knew how to wrestle when they got to high school. Our takedown club was doing so good. And happy to say we got the Munson boys are back in town doing the takedown club. Doug McBride, the tax boys is back doing the takedown club. Greg Buckley's the high school coach there. Everything's going good for our city. That's how I like it. And uh, anyway, thank you for everything. Uh, and, and what these guys have been saying about wrestling, I just want to say, you know, sports are good for for kids growing up, helps them develop, and uh, and uh, any sport. I mean, I never thought about it much. The older I get, the more I think about it. Uh, Brooke played tennis in high school. And everything it did for her uh, physically and, and mental development. And I think all support, any any kind of extracurricular activity helps. But there's nothing like wrestling. Wrestling got to be the best sport to help somebody, to help kids grow up and develop stuff they need for life. Hard work, discipline, sacrifice, dedication, perseverance. <laughs> uh, humility, confidence, courage. There's nothing like grasping, you guys. And I thought, when I retired, I said, man, I, I started thinking, I put a lot of time in wrestling. Have I helped, have I helped uh, make the world a better place? I'm sorry to say, in my mind, I concentrate more about winning tournaments or winning wrestling matches than development. But rap, if you coach wrestling, if you support wrestling, like all you people here, promote wrestling and, and support it, support wrestling coaches and officials and everything else, you're helping make the world a better place because you're helping wrestling. So I had to get off that question and answer the deal. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank <laughs> you. 